Hello! In this video, we are going to see how we can enhance the process graph so that you can see more specific parts of the process. In the last video, we saw how to create a process graph using only the three mandatory attributes obtained from the input data table. But using only these three attributes, does the chart tell us the full path? Let's check! So, here we go! Here you can see our process graph created with the three mandatory attributes case ID, activity and event end. Now, let's create our first filter to be able to see the path of, the, of a specific case. So, here we go. Let's rename the, this group to supporting attributes. Ok, now let's create the filter. New control, search box, let's edit, let's name it case, and put the custom ID filter case, and the attribute, we will choose the case ID. all and ok now let's add the filter to the process graph and then choose this case here See, let's add the filter and choose this case all right now that we have the case path, let's look at the original input table to see if it's actually showing the full path. Here we are! This is the original ta input table already filtered for the case that we choose in the chart. As we can see, the activity final check of invoice repeats itself six times, but as you can see in the chart, this is not what appears. We only have an arrow indicating there is a loop in the activity. Our goal then is to create a filter that allows us to display the loop depth of all activities. For this, we need to create an expression that determines an index for the occurrence of this activity. As we can see in this table here. Now, to create the expression activity loop depth, we need to define the order in which events should occur. For that, we need the event ID. However, our input table has the column event ID empty. To solve this, let's create an expression that will generate an ID for the events. So let's go. Alright, now we can create our event order. Great! Now we can create the activity loop depth. Great. We can see the maximum loop depth is 20. And now we can create our filter. This time will be a combo box.
Great. Now let's add the filter to the process graph. Now we need to adapt the activity attribute to work with our filter. So let's go. Ok, now let's change And now it's working Now let's compare the two graphs We can see that this one shows the full path Now let's see the, uh, some other case I'm going to choose the, this case here. I think it's a good one. Let's increase the loop depth to 20, to the maximum. And whoa! Look at that! Now let's compare again the two graphs. And you can see the difference. And I think that's all. I hope that uh, it was useful to you. And I hope you liked the video. And please subscribe and share. See you around. Bye bye.